Welcome to the dynamic grapple tutorial. In this tutorial, we will make a grapple that starts to pull you once it reaches its grappling point. So, we'll start with a blank project and we are going to use the first person character template and we'll use left mouse button just as some random action. Uh, we'll do a line trace by channel. Then for the start, we'll take the first person camera, get wall location, and we'll put it as the start point. Now we'll get the wall rotation and the forward vector of that. And then we'll multiply that by whatever range we want our grapple to reach. So if I put here 3000, our grapple will be able to reach 3000 units forward. We'll add the start direction to the end and we have ourselves a straight line. We'll break the hit result and we'll save this variable for later. We'll call it did grapple hit. We need the impact point. We'll promote that to a variable and call it grapple impact point. And then we'll use select. And we'll select between two vectors. Use the grapple hit as our index. And if the grapple did hit, we're going to use the impact point. If it didn't, we're going to use the trace end. So we'll send the grapple just randomly to the air. Now we'll do something a little different. We'll add a cable. That will be a grapple, call it a grapple cable, and we'll have its uh, number segments to be one. And we'll set it somewhere below the camera. Now the visibility for it should be off. Next up, we're going to close all of this and collapse it, and we'll call that line trace. Now, inside this, we'll organize it a little bit. We're going to add grapple reach segment. This will be, this will set the grapple cable visibility on. Set it to on. And we'll collapse all of this again so we'd have, we'd have more space. Cut grapple reach. Now here, we are going to add a timeline, it doesn't matter what it's called, and we'll add a track, float track, also doesn't matter really, and its duration should be 0 0.2. Now we'll add two keys, one at time 0 with value 0, and one with time 0.2, and value 1. And for extra polish and flare, we'll add the auto smooth. So we'll have a nice movement. Now we are going to plug this to play from start. And the output should be a finished. We'll also add a branch with the did grapple hit. Now we are going to add a set grapple endpoint. For this, we'll create a new variable, call it grapple end location, because we like to be organized, and we'll set it here. Now we'll collapse this, and we'll call it set grapple endpoint. Shorten to the point. Now we're going to add a loop vector between the two values here. And the first value is going to be our grapple impact point with inverse transform location. 
we'd get actual transform. We are doing this so the graphical impact point will be translated into the actual space, whatever. Like for example, here this these arms are at location 3, minus 4, minus 161. But this isn't the wall location, this is the actual world, for example. So what we are going to do is we are going to inverse the impact point to be of the actual transform, so we'll be able to send it uh, to the right location and not just randomly somewhere across the map. For the star location, we'll just put 100 on the x value. This is around where the cable, the endpoint in the cable, yeah, it's the default end location. Now, I'm sorry, I got confused here for a moment. What we are going to do is we are going to set the grapple cable end location. Set that to that value. And we'll delete the variable I created a moment ago. Now that we have grapple reach on, we are going to add another branch, just because we like adding these branches so much. And we are not going to continue if grapple didn't hit, but what we are going to do is we are going to set the visibility of the grapple back off because there's no need to show it if it returns to base afterwards. We are going to set the did grapple hit to false once we release the button. And then we're going to copy paste the set movement mode and set it back to walking. Now we are going to set the visibility of the grapple to false also here. Because we stopped using the grapple. Now we are going to start making a function. This function will be called grapple movement. This function will set all of our code for moving the flare around. So we'll start with a branch because you know we love these branches to make sure we have no sort of edge cases or whatever happening. If the gravel didn't hit, we aren't going to do anything. Now we're going to set the end location of the grapple. We're going to get a grapple impact point again and get actor transform. And once again, we're going to inverse transform location. As you remember from before, this is to make the grapple work to make the grapple act the same way and not send itself to whatever, wherever. Now we're doing this also in this function here that's going to loop to keep the location updated within the player transform section world, whatever it's called. For the last part, we're going to add grapple force. We'll get character movement. We'll add force to it. Plug it all together. And of course, we're going to collapse this and call it grapple force. Inside here, first of all, we'll straighten it all out. This is a chance for you to press Q also on every node that you have to make sure everything is sorted out. Now, we're going to get actor location and the grapple impact point. And now we're going to use get unit direction. So we'll get the direction from our actor, from our player, to the impact point. We'll add that. This is basically the straight line that we have from our player to the grapple, the grapple point. To, add, to that we're going to add get actor right vector with get move right left value and we're going to multiply it. So this is going to get us the direction we want to move towards at a constant rate. And this 
is the player input that we are going to add so the player will be able to swing around while using the grapple. Now we are going to multiply that by a float value. That float would say how much the, the player can control itself while using the grapple. So I like putting uh, 0.3 here, but you can put whatever you want. As far as I know, this goes from 0 to 1. Anything beyond that will make some funky results, but it's for you to experiment. Now, we're going to promote this to a local variable called grapple player control. And now we're going to add this to our straight line vector. So we'll say, uh, calc direction towards grapple point and this is calc player movement while grappling I might have made a typo there but that doesn't matter now we are going to normalize all of this Normalizing is basically turning the entire vector into one. Remember from before we had forward vector we multiplied by 3000 to make that the length of the vector, how much we go forward. Well, this here, the normalize turns it to one. So we can multiply it by whatever we want. So I'm going to multiply that by our grapple force so we won't get a random force whenever we move around now for this value i like setting it to something extreme like this you might play around with this and we'll also promote that to a local variable call that grapple force we are doing this normalized thing so as i said before we won't have random force applied, we'll always have a constant force. And then we're going to set the force, the add force here, like so. And we'll move the entire thing around. Now you may select all of this and press Q. I'll be the last one to stop you. This saved me so much trouble and OCD troubles. And now we are going to set this function to a looping state. Back in the event graph, we're going to comment this as grapple and we're going to add a begin play node. Here we're going to add timer by function name and the function name, as you might remember, is grapple movement from before. So just copy paste the function name here and set the time to 0 0.01 and don't forget to set looping on. Now we're going to promote this as a variable. We'll call that grapple movement timer ref, ref for reference. And we are going to pause timer by handle. So it won't start as the begin play starts. And now we are going to unpause timer by handle if we actually made made it this far and the grapple actually hits and everything and we are going to pause timer by handle if we stop grappling now if you followed my tutorial exactly your end result should be like so you send it if it touches something you actually get to it and if it doesn't it just goes in the air and goes back now this isn't actually a projectile, we test it first with a line trace and then we actually play the animation according to the line trace. There is no physics involved here, just a simple line trace and its results. Now if you want to change the material of this cable like I did in my uh, demonstration from before, all you need to do is go to the grapple cable and we are going to add a material wherever, call it emissive, put it on here. Now we are going to just add 
a yellow color here. I press three and then mouse click, left mouse click to uh, open that. Then multiply, let's just say 10. And we set that in the emissive color. And now we have this material on. And you can swing around freely, do whatever you want. Congratulations, you made a grapple. I forgot to mention, but this U asset that we just made in the tutorial will also be available in my GitHub in the description, so you'll be able to play around with it. See ya!